Okay, teardown time. This is a little video console called an Intellivision. It's battery powered and it connects to a, a TV set and you can play a bunch of video games on it. The Intellivision uh, brand name originated uh, with Mattel in the 1980s. It was a typical gaming console. You had plug-in cartridges and you could play a number of games. And then what happened very commonly is these were all brought into a single assembly as uh, silicon became more complicated and then offered it at a very attractive price. The games are very typical of what uh, you would see in the early 1980s and um, Let's uh, take this thing apart and uh, take a look at the silicon and what they did to put it all together. So here's the uh, single circuit board that was inside that plastic uh, case. It's a classic bit of uh, low-cost engineering. Single-sided phenolic circuit board. That's the cheapest material that you can do for circuit boards. Uh, these little positions here, of course, were the buttons, and that was uh, the rubber domes with the classic uh, conductive ink on the uh, top of them. And uh, not gold-plated or anything, so obviously uh, you know, modest service life. Uh, you get lots of hand soldering diode placed here. Uh, of course, they have to have jumpers, wired jumpers to connect connectivity uh, because it's only a single-sided board. Uh, a 2005 copyright, so uh, it, see, it's about 25 years after the original on television. Uh, you're seeing the technology. Uh, this blob here is a chip on board, so obviously something going on there. But also more interesting, there's actually then a, a fiberglass circuit board here with two blobs, which of course is two more integrated circuits. A crystal, uh, and this is exactly uh, the color burst uh, frequency uh, part of NTSC uh, design. You'll see a color burst crystal so you can create the right uh, colors. And let's just see, pop it. Um, geez, it was just glued on with some sort of uh, adhesive and then uh, soldered through. Let's uh, take all uh, three of these off and uh, we'll take a look at the silicon. So here's a photograph of three silicon dies sitting on a lab slide. Uh, going from left to right, uh, we have an ASIC, Application Specific Integrated Circuit. Um, basically, those little blocks there are separate functions. Uh, we're going to zoom into that and take a real good look in a moment. But uh, the one in the middle, uh, almost certainly some sort of memory storage device. Probably the ROM, probably storing all, all this large selection of games. And then on the far right, uh, the PMIC, Power Management Integrated Circuit. Looks like it's got a real analog function, but there's some digital circuitry as well. So, so I suspect that's a power supply, probably a reset control as well. So looking straight down, we have a top view of the ASIC, and if we're going to sort down what we're looking at, one has to reach back about 40 years and uh, to take a look at the original Mattel and television console. The one great thing about these old gaming systems, there's lots of enthusiasts who maintain all the old information. Uh, in particular for this gaming system, I found lots of information from uh, the liberator.net and console5.com. I'll put these links uh, into the description of the video if you'd like to take a further look. And uh, in particular, this is a uh, photograph of uh, one of the earliest circuit boards, and it's really helpful to uh, take a look at it. Um, very typical of a late 70s design. I think Mattel introduced this product in about 81, so about 1970s for actually designing this product. Um, let's see, let's highlight all the chips in red that are most significant. Um, first up, the graphics chip, 40-pin uh, dip, um, and next to that, the uh, graphics ROM. Uh, two kilobytes, uh, that's not a typo, kilo, everything's kilo in this uh, world of uh, design. A sound chip, uh, a 352 by 16 bit RAM, uh, not even a kilobyte, uh, that would be very tiny uh, compared to today's systems which are in the gigabytes, but um, you know even uh, back then tiny bits of memory, lots of clever designing, uh, it's really enjoyable games that you were produced with some very modest hardware. Uh, let's see, two uh, components that provide a 4 kilobyte, um, pardon me, a 4K by 10 bit uh, main control firmware RAM. And uh, note the unusual width of uh, 10 bits. We'll come to, back to that in a second. Uh, 240 bytes of uh, scratch pad RAM. And then the main CPU, a uh, general instrument CP1610. Now the general instrument uh, 1610 uh, never was a super popular CPU. I'd like to say the 6502, uh, which would be sort of contemporary to its uh, design. But uh, it was actually inspired by a very important computer called the PDP-11. And the architecture is uh, incredibly similar and uh, it's interesting that this chip didn't seem to go anywhere after that because certainly the pdp-11 uh, architecture was uh, very influential of course the uh, that architecture uh, was the one used to develop uh, unix and uh, c programming language anyways coming back to the cp1610 internal block diagram uh, you can see that there's uh, eight registers it's a eight register device uh, a 10-bit uh, instruction path and of course that like, now explains why there's a 10 10-bit wide uh, ROM sitting on the outside of this particular chip. Okay, now that we know what the main building blocks were of the Intellivision, let's see if we can sort down this chunk of silicon. Uh, let's see, the very dense structure in the very middle is a ROM, and uh, that's the instruction ROM or the boot ROM uh, for the gaming console. 
Um, now, if I take a look at the upper left there, I can see eight repeating structures and a bus width of so 10 bits, uh, which uh, really strongly suggests that that's probably the register set of the CP1610 CPU. A lot of the websites say that this uh, particular console is an emulation of the architecture, but um, it really looks like a strong design choice there that that is a uh, CP1610 or at least a very similar CPU type structure. Uh, going below the, the ROM, I suspect that's the, uh, the sound chip, and then to the uh, left would be the graphics uh, processor. Uh, not a CPU type graphics processor you like find in today with like the GPUs and their um, uh, micro slice architectures with tons of CPUs. Um, back then the, uh, the graphics was very much just uh, involved in trying to uh, get an image onto the screen. Uh, those uh, items on the left hand side are uh, SRAMs and um, there are hundreds of gigabytes of SRAM. So um, here, here you go, basically what happened is the console, every chip was basically shrunk onto a single piece of silicon. And of course, uh, that of course drives the cost down dramatically and that's the name of the game uh, with silicon. That's uh, Moore's Law and the power of uh, reducing the uh, feature sizes and squeezing basically everything onto a single chip. Let's uh, take a look at that ROM next. So this is the ROM. It uh, stores basically uh, about 20 cartridges worth of uh, information. I don't think it's an EEPROM. It might be. Um, it has uh, some text on it, TT2318, uh, copyright of 2002, uh, December in the mass copyright. Couldn't find much more on the actual device itself, and uh, the memory cells are under a metalization layer, so it's hard to sort down whether or not we're looking at like, a, a PROM, which is uh, programmed in the uh, factory, or if this is a, a mask-type ROM. But, um, not too much of a surprise that this is where the storage is. Uh, and lastly, uh, this is the, the PMIC, uh, the Power Management Integrated Circuit. Uh, this console takes uh, four AA batteries and of course has to convert that to a stable voltage. Um, you also need to create a, a reset signal, a power run reset to uh, get everything initialized correctly. Uh, you can see a very much a pad, uh, limited design, tons of pads on the outside there, uh, basically di dictating the size of the die. but. Um, you can see some NPN transistors, which suggest some sort of uh, linear type regulator. And then some sort of logic in the middle, which is probably, I presume, the power on reset. Uh, anyways, there we go. There's all the silicon that uh, makes up a uh, little inexpensive uh, console that uh, emulates a, a very old gaming system.